Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for this week's Thursday with AARP Wisconsin. I am Amber Miller, your host. Um, and before we get to our guest today, of course, um, just as a friendly reminder that you can visit the AARP Wisconsin website 24 hours a day to get information regarding upcoming events like this. Um, advocacy, volunteerism, um, all of that can be found on aarp.org slash WI for Wisconsin. Also, please remember community connections. Um, this is open to anybody, any age. You do not need to be an AARP member, but you can find additional information on volunteer opportunities within your neighborhood, or you can actually create your own volunteer opportunity and get a group together. You can also find information on this website regarding um, our um, sorry, our uh, volunteers that can give you a call um, at any time of the day, you could put a request in and this could be for yourself or for a loved one. And once again, that's free um, and you could be any age. Also please, oh, or the phone number below, 1-888-281-0145. Um, even though we are living in a virtual world at the moment, um, we are always looking for great volunteers. If you're interested in volunteering with AARP Wisconsin, um, there are many um, ways that you can do so through advocacy, through outreach, through presentations, and much more. You can follow the link below, which is aarp.org backslash I want the number two volunteer. Um, you can also find the information on the regular AARP Wisconsin website also. So today we're always excited to have uh, Miss Lisa Lampkins with us talking all about um, advocacy. And I know today we're going to be talking a little bit more about work and save and all that goodness. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Amber. I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you so much. We always love to have the advocacy team. We always bring such valuable information. Um, and if you have any questions for Lisa or myself during the show, you can post them below if you're on facebook.com or our YouTube page, and we will get to them throughout the show. Um, so Lisa, earlier this week, um, uh, specifically at the start of October 12th, we celebrated National Savings Day. So today we're going to talk a little bit about retirement savings and why is this topic so important? Well, I thought National Savings Day was a good excuse to have yet another celebration and yet another opportunity to talk about savings. Um, and I think, you know, right now it's really important because the pandemic has shown us how vital it is for people to have savings to depend on. And whether that's for short term emergency savings or saving longer term for retirement. The challenge is people just aren't saving enough, especially for retirement. Um, the average household that's getting close to retirement only has about $14,000 saved. And when you think about it, that is not going to go very far. At the same time, we know Social Security is not enough to depend on, even though it's the awesome bedrock of our retirement savings. So we have been pushing for something that we call work and save. Um, this would make it easier for workers to grow their retirement savings and save their own money. Um, and, you know, talking about it this week is a great way, I think, to celebrate National Savings Day. And to me, um, the $14,000 that you mentioned, which is like the average, is scary because a lot of people, and once again, I always say this, I, I think a, working at AARP has been a blessing because some of the stuff that we focus on is stuff that I did not think about. Um, and I'm 42, so in my 20s and my 30s, I wasn't thinking about Medicare, wasn't thinking about um, Social Security, and I sure enough wasn't thinking about retirement. So 14000 we know with bills and just living cost that that won't last very long. So, I mean, this is such a great topic to talk about. And Lisa, what if you could talk a little bit more about yeah. what Work and Save is and how does it work? Yeah, so Work and Save is actually a term that we kind of came up with at um, AARP. So we sort of use it to describe programs um, that operate within a state they operate kind of like a 529 college savings plan. So in Wisconsin, we have a college savings plan called EdVest. We've had it for years. So we are pushing state legislators in Wisconsin to create something similar for retirement savings. And here's why. 
we know people are 15 times more likely to save for retirement if they can do it out of their regular paycheck. Mm -hmm. Yet we have a ton of people in Wisconsin, like over 930,000 Wisconsin workers that don't have any way to save um, for retirement at work. And if they had this way, we know it makes it tons easier for people to build up um, their savings. Mm -hmm. There are really three parts to the program. So at the risk of rambling on a little bit, I'll just kind of mention those three key pieces. It's kind of three components. One is really workers. A work and save program allows workers to choose if they want to participate in the savings plan and how much they want to save. Money comes directly out of their paycheck, goes into a retirement account. That account is attached to the individual worker, not to the company. So it goes with you if you leave your job. The second part are businesses. We've heard from small businesses across the state of Wisconsin, they want to offer retirement savings programs, but it's complicated, it's expensive, it's time consuming to figure it out. A small business doesn't have an HR department to work on all of this. Mm -hmm. Having something like a work and save program would change all of that. It would give businesses access to an easy, no cost option. All they have to do is payroll deduction. Mm -hmm. The third piece is the state of Wisconsin. In the long run, it actually helps the state by helping people save their own money um, so people don't have to rely on safety net programs later on. So those are the three kind of key pieces of it. Um, I will say we have a great video, kind of a work and save 101 explanation video um, at our new action, our advocacy action <laughs> website, which is mobilize dot us slash aarp wi so i encourage people to go check that out uh, for a much better explanation than what i just did great very definitely valuable information and if i'm not mistaken um lisa this website just launched sort of recently it did actually um uh, we are trying to get new things up for it, um, but we have lots of work and save stuff. We have a work and save 101 video. We have um, a small business owner talking about how a program like this would be really important to him. Um, in the coming days, we're going to have some cool action steps that people can take. Um, and we have um, action items for other things too, social security, prescription drugs, um, helping uh, caregivers. So it's actually a great way to get involved with all that AARP is doing to help older folks in um, our state. Beautiful. And Lisa, with regards to work and say, what is the state of Wisconsin doing to create this program and do other states currently have it? Yeah, well, so um, actually Wisconsin has been trying to <laughs> move something forward for a long time. Earlier this year, the Governor's Task Force on Retirement Security that was headed up by our state treasurer, Sarah Godlewski, and I was on that um, committee. Um, we came up with several recommendations to help improve retirement security within our state. And creating this kind of program was one of those recommendations. And we recommended it because other states have had success um, in creating this kind of program. Um, states really are leading the way in making mm -hmm. this happen. There are actually 12 states now that have enacted various work and save programs. Um, Illinois, Massachusetts, Colorado, New Mexico, Maine, several others. Um, and there are lots of different models. That's the cool thing about this is you can really make it work for, you know, for your state. Um, I will say um, Oregon was the first state to launch their program. They launched it in 2017. And since that time, um, 86,000 workers in Oregon have funded accounts. They contribute on average $130 a month. And the assets in that program have grown to over $79 million. Wow. So that is huge when you think about these were folks who were not saving money for retirement before this program. And the one thing I will, if I could mention this too, Lisa, is if our viewers are watching this and if they were either like me before thinking about retirement or currently maybe getting to retirement age and you're thinking right now, like, I don't even have maybe enough money 
to put into a retirement savings account. Um, I'm going to plug, I know AARP has a lot of resources, but the AARP Money Map, which is in English and we also have it in Spanish. Um, they were on our show earlier this year. So even though maybe you're not thinking about retirement for whatever reason, and, and especially if it's for, for financial reasons, there are different resources through AARP to kind of get you on the path of if you need help with money management or budgeting, so then you can start thinking about retirement and find those dollars to possibly put into a savings account, especially if this comes to Wisconsin. Yeah, you know, Amber, I think that's really key, and I really appreciate you plugging those programs because we do know, you know, a lot of people struggle, um, especially after this pandemic, yeah. with everyday expenses and, you know, finding ways to, you know, pay off credit card balances, you know, finding better ways to streamline monthly bills. Mm -hmm. AARP has terrific resources on all of those things. And so um, I really do encourage people to check those out. So thank you for reminding yeah. um, our listeners about that. Yeah, and Money Map 2 is open to anyone over the age of 18. I have personally used it, super user friendly. Um, so even if you're like, Ooh, retirement, maybe I'll think about that in the next month or two, please at least check out Money Map because it'll really start getting you thinking. So I just wanted to make a side note. Um, so Lisa, so I know there are um, a wide variety of retirement savings vehicles currently offered by the financial service industry. Um, a lot of acronyms, but um, can um, can people can't people already go out and do this on their own? Yeah, and that's one question we get all the time, right? Like, why does why do we have to have a program for this? Um, there are things like IRAs that are out there. You can you know go to a bank and um, you know open an IRA. Um, so those things, those ways to save for retirement, do exist out there in the private sector today. Problem is, we know what's out there is not working. Participation rates in retirement plans haven't changed in more than 40 years. They are not increasing. Mm -hmm. um, and for people, if you don't have a retirement savings plan at work, people are not going out and just opening a plan on their own either. Only one in 20 people will open their own IRA. Um, this is one of those human behavior things, mm -hmm. right? We will, um, it takes a lot of energy to do some of this. And so um, one of the, the reasons for um, doing a payroll deduction is it just sort of happens automatically. Mm -hmm. Workers can opt out if they don't want that to happen. Um, so you don't have to contribute anything in a work and save program, but people are generally, you know, kind of go with the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is people aren't going out um, and signing up for anything on their own. They're not opening their own IRAs. We also sometimes get asked if this kind of program would hurt small financial service providers. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is, Work and Save really isn't set to compete with the private sector. In fact, it's really run in conjunction with the private sector as a public-private partnership. The people who sign up for these kinds of programs, for work and save programs, generally aren't going to financial providers. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough assets often for those financial providers to even mm -hmm. want to help them. But what we're seeing in some other places is work and save is changing that by creating almost a whole new class of savers. Mm -hmm. um, and those are folks the private markets haven't been able to reach yet, um, but we feel pretty confident that they will in the future. Um, so it's a really good, let's just say it's a good first step um, into those, those retirement savings. And Lisa, I know we talked a little bit about money map, um, but when it comes to like lower income workers who are currently still working, being able to, you know, contribute to retirement savings programs, what are your remarks on that and how can they do it? Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly this is a challenge. We, you know, I know firsthand how hard it can be. Um, and we know there are a lot of people who struggle with having extra money. Mm -hmm. We have seen research that shows 75% of low income American families think that payroll deduction is really critical when it comes to savings. Unfortunately, access to those kind of workplace plans decreases as your income decreases. So mm -hmm. lower income workers um, don't very often have access to those plans wherever they work. 
um, to already start saving. Um, I had mentioned that Oregon um, mm -hmm. had that, this first work and save program. And I think I'll point to them really as proof that lower income workers will participate. The average income for savers in their program is just $29,000. Mm -hmm. um, and the good thing about these programs is, you know, you don't have to contribute $200 a mm -hmm. month or, you know, $100 a month. Um, you can contribute $25 a month. Um, so it doesn't have to be a big amount. And I know sometimes, you know, every extra $5 can make yeah. a difference. Um, but I, I, we know that um, this is a way that will help lower income workers um, actually start to grow their savings mm -hmm. and have a little bit more, um, you know, financial um, cushion. Um, it just makes it a lot easier if they can save directly out of their regular paycheck. And Lisa, I do appreciate the fact that you stated it doesn't have to be a couple hundred dollars. It could be $25. And when you think about that, I mean, that's, you know, five to four to five dollars a week or six dollars a week. And that could be, you know, I'm a, you know, I always call them spending leaks, but I'm guilty of going to Walgreens saying I'm going to pick up one thing and then pick up 25 things. And just, you know, being aware and thinking how you could possibly put that into a retirement fund and, how that can grow just by maybe cutting back on everyday things. So I appreciate the fact of the $25 a month. Um, and it looks like, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to add on to that, Amber. You know, um, I think we all know um, one of the biggest tenets of sort of saving money is you don't spend it if you don't see it. <laughs> and that the power of the payroll deduction mm -hmm. cannot be understated here. Mm -hmm. You know, if your paycheck is twenty-five dollars less, yep. um, you'll fi you'll figure out a way to maybe do some of that little bit of cutting back. Correct. At the same time, what happens to that twenty-five dollars is it gets pooled with a whole bunch of other people's twenty-five dollars, um, and before you know it, the beauty of compound interest is helping, and you've really leveraged that amount to help, you know, grow a cushion uh, mm -hmm. for emergency for um, retirement savings. So um, that's where the, the key, the power of payroll deduction yeah. um, really is uh, critical to this. It has helped me tremendously through my current employer. Um, uh, payroll deductions, I, I agree, it's out of sight, out of mind. You don't even like pl plan on it. And then I just plan accordingly on, on ways that it won't affect mm -hmm. my everyday budget. So I really appreciate this um, program. It looks like we have, um, we'll take a question from Arlene. It would be her last comment. Um, so who would administer the plan if it, if it did come to the state of Wisconsin? Yeah, so um, that's a great question, Arlene. Thank you. The way this works is um, it's really a public-private partnership. And what I mean by that, um, it's a partnership between the state of Wisconsin, that's the public part, um, and a professional financial institution, that's the private part. Um, and so the, the state basically says, okay, we're going to contract out with this particular financial group and they're going to manage this program. And we're gonna, we the state, um, you know, is gonna set up an oversight board. So it's not just, you know, a private company running roughshod and, and uh, running away with everybody's money. There is a lot of oversight that goes with it. Um, it works exactly the same as our college savings program, right? It's called EdVest. Um, it's a 529 program, and the state of Wisconsin um, contracts out with a financial services provider, um, and, and they're the ones, they're professionals, and so they're the ones who, you know, they have the um, different funds that they choose from, they do the reporting, they do the record keeping, um, and so it would be administered um, exactly that same way. Um Thank you so much, Arlene, for for that question. And I apologize, Lisa. I don't I don't know if you answered, but why should we use the taxpayer dollars? Well, um, yeah. here is actually the good thing um, is that this 
does not use taxpayer oh, dollars. Okay. So um, okay. it acts, I know, tricky, huh? Yes. Um, so, you know, I said this is a public private partnership. Of course, there are um, some, you know, kind of minimal startup costs um, mm -hmm. to get this going. What happens and what has happened in other states and the way it would work is that the people who enroll in the program, there are always fees um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of those fees get leveraged out over years. That goes back to pay up the startup cost, but it's very, very minor. There are no ongoing use of taxpayer dollars um, to, to do this program. Um, it actually saves taxpayer dollars in the long run. Um, because what we'll see, I mean, we mentioned, you know, if people aren't saving enough money, um, if, you know, and we said uh, people close to retirement have about over $14,000 saved. That is not nearly enough um, for, you know, a 15 year um, retirement. What happens if people don't have enough money in savings is that they end up going on to public assistance programs to help, you know, out with the basic safety net things. In fact, there are some estimates that in Wisconsin, um, if we don't do something to address this lack of savings in retirement, um, we're going to have 400,000 seniors living in poverty by 2030. And 2030 isn't nearly as long, yeah. <laughs> as far away as it sort of sounds like. If we can figure out a way to help people save, we can save $3 billion of taxpayer money that would otherwise go to these programs. Um, that people won't need if they have saved enough of their own money. So oh. I think that's really important to stress that um, this is, I, sometimes I call this a win-win-win. It's a win for workers um, who have the chance to, you know, save for their own retirement, saving their own money. It's a win for small businesses who don't have to, um, you know, pay anything. If there's no cost to the business to participate, and it's really a win for the state and taxpayers um, who will also save money by helping people kind of save for their own retirement. Um, and so then they won't need to go on public programs later mm -hmm. on. And Lisa, um, I, for it's kind of a two part question. So if a small business owner is watching this right now thinking, wow, this sounds like a really great program. Is there a website that he or she could go to that is any different than if I wanted to get information about it? Yeah, I mean, people can still go to um, the aarp.org slash work and jobs, I think. And, and um, we'll make sure we put that in the notes. Yeah, let's show. post that in. Okay. Um, and I think even if you just sort of, if you go to our AARP Wisconsin webpage, I think we do have some links to, and if not, we will get them up really quickly, mm -hmm. uh, some links uh, to some of the information. Um, even on that Mobilize page, so mm -hmm. I will say there is a terrific video um, of a small business owner who talked about how he wanted to provide something for his um, employees but was having problems, like people weren't mm -hmm. calling him back, he couldn't figure out how to get started. Um, so I do encourage even small business owners to go to uh, that Mobilize site. Mm -hmm. And Amber, you didn't even know this, but this gives me a great yeah. opportunity um, to plug a small business roundtable that we are having on mm -hmm. October 27th. It's a virtual roundtable. Mm -hmm. um, it's from 11 to 12. Central Time. Um, and we're going to be talking about kind of financial resilience in the state, um, you know, how the role that small businesses play in that, um, and how something like Work and Save could help small businesses. Um, we will post the um, registration information on our webpage, and it will definitely be again on that Mobilize page. Um, and we'd love to have any small business owners, gig workers, um, we'd love to have folks join us.
Yeah, no, and that's great. So the mobilize would be a great or our website, a great resource if you are just a part like a, a, a resident looking for more information. But if you're also a small business owner, the roundtable that Lisa talked about sounds fascinating. But if you're like, wow, this is something that we would be interested in to provide to our employees that roundtable coming up on the 27th sounds like a really good next step. Yeah, I think it, it. I think it's going to be terrific. We mm -hmm. are working with um, a, an organization called uh, Public Private Partnerships, and um, they are um, have fantastic contacts within the business world. Know lots about um, small business and and you know how to kind of get folks involved. We're going to have a panel discussion. We're going to hear from um, a couple of experts at AARP, but we're going to hear from some chambers from around the state um, and. Uh, some small business owners as well. So we would love to have um, small business folks join us for that. Great. We will definitely make sure that we put that in the in the notes for the show. Um, Lisa, any final comments? We have always appreciate you being on the show, but any final comments to our viewers? Yeah, you know, I think this is one of those things. The one thing I, I also want to stress is this is really a bipartisan solution to the retirement crisis mm -hmm. issue. Right. I mean, this is basically figuring out a way to help it make it easier for people to save their own money. Mm -hmm. um, so we really are very hopeful that there will be bipartisan support in the Wisconsin state legislature um, for a program like this. This is really something that both Democrats and Republicans can get behind. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just encourage people to, again, check out that um, Mobilize website. Um, because there will be ways to take action to encourage your legislators to support this program. And we'll just put up one uh, final comment from Terrence. And he is saying um, that would be great to hear what the chambers would say and how it can benefit businesses. So I think I think we got a few folks excited about your upcoming roundtable. Wonderful. That is terrific. And we, we will make sure that information is all posted. Yes. I don't think it's up there quite yet, but... Um, okay. It'll be there soon. Great. Well, Lisa, as always, thank you so much for joining us. You always bring such valuable information and we'll be looking forward to seeing what else you're working on. So make sure if you want to find out what advocacy is working on to stop at the AARP Wisconsin website. So thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate you being on today's show. Thanks, Amber. Thank always you. a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Um, and of course, before we end the show, we wanted to share with you some upcoming events if you're interested in registering for them. Um, so, oh, mm -hmm. Okay, so we have movies for grownups. Um, yeah, okay, now, uh, there's a movie coming up and I will not slaughter the name because my producer Darren <laughs> Uh, likes to make fun of me. So there's a movie coming up this Friday. Uh, Tuesday the 19th, a lecture on fraud in the heartland, the original internet godfather. So all about fraud and scams. October 20th, we're going to be joined by our friends at the American Red Cross of Wisconsin talking about being prepared. We know winter's around the corner. So they're going to be talking about tips and tricks on how to be safe during the winter. October 26th, uh, prepare to care. So finding answers, support, and local resources. That'll be, uh, I will be the facilitator for that. So we'd love to join you. Uh, join us more about caregiving resources. Small Dollar Big Impact, of course, is a, uh, of course, is a grant program that we started last year. Um, applications are due October 20th. So if you know of an organization, municipality that would be interested in applying for a grant of up to $1,000, um, you could do so by visiting aarp.org backslash WI and then SDBI. So that's pretty much stands for Wisconsin Small Dollar Big Impact. Um, applications are due October 20th. So for next week's show, uh, we're going to talk all about fraud. Fraud, of course, has always been an issue even before COVID. But since COVID, um, there has been a lot of new scams and fraud. So we're going to be joined by our associate, Courtney, who um, talks, uh, who leads the efforts with fraud. So join us back here next Thursday, October 21st at noon. And you can visit here on our Facebook.com page or our YouTube page. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday. And until then, be safe.